Hi, I'm Justin Sears, Product Marketing Manager at Hortonworks. In October, we launched Hortonworks Data Platform version 2.0, which we'll refer to as HDP2. In this product tour, we'll talk about four important areas of improvement in Hadoop. First of all, we'll talk about Yarn as the operating system for Hadoop. Then we'll talk about Hive 12, the Stinger initiative, and interactive queries at petabyte scale. Then we'll talk about Apache and Bari 141 to provision, manage, and monitor a Hadoop cluster. And finally, we'll talk about improvements to HBase version 096. And I'm here today with Bob Page, who's VP of Product at Hortonworks. As Hadoop started to gain more popularity, what ended up happening was a number of use cases emerged where it was, well, how we, maybe we do something more than just MapReduce, maybe SQL, for example. Mm -hmm. Here's the key. MapReduce in version one of Hadoop thought it controlled all of the hardware resources, the CPU, the disk, I.O., et cetera. What happened in the open source community is there was this thought around what became Yarn. Why don't we split MapReduce from the resource management that MapReduce is doing today in Hadoop 1? Mm -hmm. Pulling those two apart, where MapReduce becomes a client, if you will, for the underlying resource manager meant that other clients could emerge as well. Mm -hmm. It could be SQL, it could be HBase, it could be any number of things. Now you've got many different kinds of um, applications for the data, accessing the same data on the same machinery, all being managed by this YARN, right, this application um, resource manager. That's right. the promise of Yarn. It, okay. al it allows many different programs, if you will, to run on the same data on the same machine. And that's why we like to say it's almost like the operating system for data. The initiative itself is a sort of multi-phased initiative, really ought to go after three different things. The first is to make sure that the SQL, the, the, the actual data types and the verbs that you would use, the functions you would use in SQL, mm -hmm. are very familiar and very much like SQL you'd find from other places. So that's, that's SQL. The second is scale. And because it compresses so well, the amount that you have to read is very, very small. So that really allows you to get the benefits of scale. Th the third element of the Stinger initiative that I want to bring up is speed. Mm -hmm. But as more folks start to come to Hadoop and start to take on more of the different workloads, more folks said, you know, I'd like more interactive kind of SQL. I'd like to be able to do things like visualization and interactive query. What we're seeing now is pretty impressive. Where on Hive 10, say, um, we were seeing around, say, 1,400 seconds to bring a query back. Mm -hmm. we're, we've been seeing uh, somewhere in the sort of six second So 1,400 seconds to six seconds. About that. We really want Hive to be 100 times faster than it is today. Mm -hmm. And it looks like we're going to pass that. Ambari is two things. Ambari, mm -hmm. at its highest level, Ambari is a uh, open source project that allows you to provision, manage, and monitor your Hadoop clusters. Mm -hmm. What it layers on top of that is a programmatic API. Mm -hmm. So all the things that it can do are exposed to other programs. One of the programs that is available in the, in the open source community is called a, a Ambari Web. Hmm. Ambari Web is a web-based graphical user interface that can speak to the underlying management fabric and allows an operator who doesn't have to go get a PhD in Hadoop management uh, know how to set up and run a, a, a cluster. And they do that all through the user interface? They do, mm -hmm. yes. And most people, when they think about Ambari, they actually think about Ambari web. Okay. The reason why I make the distinction is that Ambari, the management fabric, is being used today by a number of third parties. For hmm. example, Teradata uses it. Mm -hmm. The beauty is Teradata has hooked right into the Ambari management fabric and allows a Teradata operator using Teradata's viewpoint tool to be able to manage Hadoop clusters. Microsoft is doing the same thing. So Hortonworks and Microsoft work together to create uh, at Microsoft System Center, which is another uh, management tool that many Microsoft-based shops will use to do ma their management and operations hmm. allows them to see what's happening in their Hadoop cluster. And actually that Hadoop cluster could be running on Windows or it could be running on Linux. 
HBase has had a very large community working on many different facets of it, whether it be speed or reliability, et cetera. One of the things that has been, um, it, can be a, it can be a problem, is how quickly HBase will detect a problem and then recover from that problem. Okay. Mean time to recovery is exactly the way we think about it, okay. or MTTR, right? We, so we if people hear MTTR, that's what that. That's the mean time to recover. How, how quickly can you detect and recover from a, some kind of failure? We've been able to pull those down from somewhere in the kind of 10 minute range, which as you can believe can be very, very problematic for a lot of companies that depend on this, to under a minute, under 60 seconds. Mm -hmm. So, And we're continuing to drive that even further. And HBase now runs on Windows, right? It does, in fact. When a lot of the original work was done with Microsoft and Hortonworks to bring Hadoop to Windows, HBase wasn't part of that, mm -hmm. just for a whole number of reasons. Uh, but we felt it was important, Microsoft felt it was important, the community felt it was important to have that available. So HBase 96 also now is a first class citizen on Windows. That's great. Bob, thanks for joining and talking about all the changes to HDP2. Oh, Justin, thanks for having me. And thanks for joining us for our conversation on HDP2. You can keep up to date on all the changes that are coming through Hortonworks and the community on our website. We have an HDP2 product page. We also have a lab section of our website that talks about work in progress, so you can see things that are coming through in Hadoop before they're actually generally available. Now also, we've talked about Hive, HBase, Ambari, and Yarn. New changes there, we'll post those to our blog, so come and follow us on our blog. And in case you don't come to our blog every day, follow us on Twitter, because anytime we post something to our blog, we'll be tweeting about it. Thanks so much for joining this conversation. Have a great day.